This is the Power Mac G5, Apple's last flagship PowerPC-based Mac, and today we're going to be taking a look at it, how it performs, and at the end we're going to be converting it into an ATX PC case. Let's get started. So first, let's talk about the computer's design. I, I really love this generation of Mac computer, the first aluminum Macs that Apple came out with. This has to be one of my favorite Macs that Apple has ever designed, both inside and out. And one of the big reasons is because this computer has aged really well in terms of design. It doesn't look out of place yet if you were to still use it, unlike a lot of things from the early 2000s that if you were to use them nowadays would look and feel old. This computer still feels new. And I think it's amazing that Apple was able to create a computer that still looks contemporary 17 years later. So this computer was designed to replace the Power Mac G4. And one of the selling points of the G5 was that it was one of the first consumer computers that ran on a 64-bit architecture. Now there were a number of improvements moving to 64-bit. One was that you could address more memory, so you could go beyond the four gigabyte limit of 32-bit systems, but also Certain applications that dealt with large numbers saw a dramatic speed increase because now you had a much larger pipeline to work with. So the model I have here is a 2004 model. It has dual 2 gigahertz PowerPC G5 970 FXs, 512 megabytes of RAM, a 160 gigabyte 7200 RPM hard drive, and an NVIDIA GeForce FX 5200 Ultra on an AGP Pro slot. So what does this mean in terms of performance? Well, we're gonna be taking a look at some benchmarks and I thought it would be interesting to compare it against a Chromebook. So why a Chromebook? Because Chromebooks generally have just enough performance to do your day-to-day -day task and run on very low-end processors. So I thought it'd be interesting to compare today's low-end processors with flagship stuff from many, many years ago. So the computer we're gonna be comparing it against is this Acer Chromebook 15, which has a Celeron N3350 processor, and that is clocked at 1.1 gigahertz and has two cores. Now this is a six watt processor, so it's very low power. So how does it compare against the Power Mac? The first thing we're gonna look at is web performance, and we're gonna be doing that with Chrome on the Chromebook and 104 Fox on the Power Mac G5. And 104 Fox is a newer version of Firefox backported to the PowerPC architecture uh, for these older Macs. So we're gonna look at first SunSpider, which is a JavaScript based browser benchmark. So the Power Mac got a score of 1245 milliseconds and the Chromebook got a score of 647 milliseconds. So the Chromebook here in this case is about twice as fast in this specific JavaScript benchmark. And again, we're comparing across browsers here. So take these with a grain of salt. Now, just for comparison's sake, I ran the same benchmark on my iPhone XS and it got a score of 113. So about 10 times faster than the Power Mac. But even then, the Chromebook is still about twice as fast as the flagship computer from 17 years ago. So the next set of benchmarks I ran was the speedometer benchmark by BrowserBench, and this tests web page rendering speed, so how fast does the browser paint elements onto the screen. So the Power Mac scored 4.66, while the Chromebook scored 27.16. In this case, the higher score is better. So about five, six times faster in this case. So yeah, the Power Mac isn't very fast in terms of web browsing performance. So it's definitely not something I would want to use today. So the last thing I ran was video encoding benchmarks, seeing as the Power Mac, uh, one of the most common use cases was as a dedicated video editing machine. Um, so to do that, we're gonna use Handbrake and we're gonna encode the same one minute test clip uh, to 720p, 2000 kilobits per second. Now the Power Mac was able to complete the encode in nine minutes and 57 seconds, but the Chromebook was able to complete the same encode in only two minutes and 31 seconds. So about four times as fast. So even in a workload that the Power Mac was optimized for, this Chromebook performs better, but it's also 15 years newer. So yeah, the Power Mac isn't fast, even compared to a very low end computer from today. So what can we do with it? So what we're gonna do today is actually convert this old Power Mac into an ATX PC case. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna rip it apart. So first, let's get the side panel off. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take off all the easy pieces, like the fans, which are actually, you can just slot right off. 
and the CPU trim piece that has the G5 logos on it. Now this one has a little security tab on the inside that you have to pop off before you can remove that trim piece, but after that, uh, it slides off with a little bit of force. So the next thing I did was remove the two heat sinks. Now this is a little tricky because you have to either have a very long Allen key or a very long Torx T10 screwdriver. Um, I was able to use my longest screwdriver and just pull out the bit a little bit to get the length needed to remove those middle two screws. But once you get all eight bolts loosened, you ought to be able to pull up on both of the heat sinks and remove them. Uh, and this also pulls up the daughter boards for the CPUs because those are attached to the heatsink, not the motherboard. So at this point, we can actually remove the motherboard. Uh, and to do that, we're going to make sure that we unplug all the motherboard connectors and then we can unscrew and wiggle out the motherboard. And this is gonna take a little bit of effort. It doesn't wanna come out easily. So once we get the motherboard out, we can move on to taking out the power supply. Uh, and the only thing we have to be careful of is there is a third connector that sort of connects to the hard disks and the disk drive up top that we can disconnect before we pull the power supply out. So the next thing we're going to do is remove the top shelf. Now historically this is kind of tricky, so I'm going to attach some instructions below on how to get this top shelf off. Now you're going to need a Torx T8 screwdriver to remove some of the screws that attach to the floor of the chassis. Now the reason why this is tricky is because you have to remove the latching mechanism for the side panel. Uh, there's a retention bracket on the actual latch itself as well as underneath each of the three pegs uh, that lock onto the side panel. So once you've got the latching mechanism removed, we can take out this top shelf. Uh, and we're going to put it to the side because we're going to be making some cuts on it later. So now that we have all of the parts out of the computer, I'm going to talk about the components I'm going to use to do this ATX conversion. Now, this is actually my second time doing uh, a Power Mac G5 conversion. Uh, I actually did this 10 years ago and used parts from a donor ATX case to sort of install uh, into the Power Mac. But this time I'm going to be using a kit from the Laser Hive, which is a UK based company that's been doing this for a very long time. Now they have a number of options that you can select from. They have kits for Micro ATX and Full ATX. Uh, you can choose to use the original 92 millimeter fans or uh, mount a 120 millimeter fan of your own. Uh, and there's also an option for an ATX power supply bracket or not. So the kit that I ordered was for a full ATX motherboard. It has a 120 millimeter fan mount and a PSU bracket. So the next step is cutting the case to install the components from this kit. Uh, to do that, we're going to line up the back plate and then mark out the places we need to cut with a Sharpie. Now we're going to be doing the cuts with a rotary tool, in this case, a Dremel. And throughout this entire video, I use about seven or eight reinforced cutting discs. So if you're gonna do this yourself, make sure you have enough discs on hand. Also make sure that you're wearing eye protection because this does have the tendency of fleeing bits of metal everywhere. So next you're gonna to wanna to file those edges that you just cut. And the reason is because you don't wanna cut yourself on any of those sharp edges when you're plugging stuff into the back of the computer. Next, we're gonna cut the top shelf that we set aside earlier. Now, this is technically optional. If you don't care about a disk drive, you don't really need the top shelf, um, but I think it's really cool. So we're going to keep the shelf and uh, we're gonna install the power supply to mark out the areas of the top shelf that we wanna cut. I left a little notch for the bracket that holds the clear acrylic side panel on, uh, but I didn't realize until after I installed everything that the kit actually prevents the side panel from being installed. The power supply is too low for the panel to close. It is steel, so it's a little tougher than the aluminum uh, the rest of the chassis is made of, uh, so you're going to want to take your time. But once you've made that cut, you're going to want to file the edges again because you don't want to cut yourself or uh, your power supply cables uh, when you assemble everything back together again. So the last thing I did was remove all of the standoffs that uh, prevent the motherboard tray from being installed. So to do that, you can actually use one of the uh, CPU posts and screw them into each standoff and then lightly tap with a hammer. Um, and this will break off all of the standoffs. Okay, so that concludes all the modifications we have to do to the case. Next, we're gonna start installing the kit. Uh, and to do that, we're going to first start with the back plate. We're gonna screw those on with the included nuts and bolts. And then we're gonna install the IO shield and PCIe bracket. So the next thing we're gonna do is install the motherboard tray. Now, one thing to note is that the screw holes on the top and bottom of the tray are a little bit larger to allow for some forward and aft adjustment of the tray to get the motherboard as close to the back panel as possible. Uh, just in case your, for example, your IO shield doesn't line up or your uh, PCI Express cards uh, don't screw in. Um, so keep those loose for now and tighten them up once you figure out where the motherboard needs to go. So that's it. 
we finished the ATX conversion and now we can start treating this as a normal ATX PC case. Now I don't have a, a computer to put in here yet. I'm waiting for Zen 3, uh, so that's gonna be a later video. Um, but in the meantime, I've put in an older PC. Uh, it's actually the original PC that I put into the first Power Mac conversion that I did. And this is a Core 2 era system, so it's like 10 years old at this point. But I just wanted to see how everything fits. Uh, and it fits pretty well. I had to slide the motherboard tray all the way towards the back of the case. Um, but once I did that, the motherboard I.O. all lines up very well. Uh, the graphics card has a little bit of a gap between the bracket itself and the graphics card, but it doesn't prevent me from screwing everything in, so that's okay as well. Okay, so conclusions. Uh, I think that this kit actually makes it very easy to do your own Power Mac G5 conversion. It's definitely easier than going out and custom rigging everything yourself like I, I attempted with my first build. It doesn't look the best, I'd argue, uh, because it does cover up a lot of the back if you care about what the back of the computer looks like. It Definitely doesn't look stock. A lot of people spend a lot more effort to get a better looking product, but this is definitely the easiest way to do it yourself. And one of the great things about that is once you've finished building the computer and started using it, you can start enjoying the computer again. It saves the machine from a fate of being stuck in a closet collecting dust. Even though you've sacrificed the original components in the computer, you can keep the legacy of the design around. Uh, and continue using it like it was supposed to be used. Anyway, that's it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed. Um, I know this is my first upload in a while, but I have a lot of ideas for where I want to take this channel and future videos yet to come. So I really hope you subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.